really the, a lot of the research I'm looking at is, is things that farmers can take to the field, you know, this year, next year, uh, as opposed to, you know, a lot of the, the breeders and things, you know, it takes several years to kind of come up with some answers. You know, we usually have answers, you know, within a year or two on a lot of the research we're looking at. We're looking at uh, seeding rates, which is a, a big thing now. Um, trying to find that optimum seeding rate because soybean seeds are, are getting expensive, you know, just like with other commodities and other seeds. And so really it's gonna to come to the point that, you know, farmers are gonna to have to account for every single seed they put in the, in the field. And so if we can come up with the exact amount of seed that a farmer needs to plant and the exact, you know, rate, you know, that's going to enhance his, his production and, and, and give him the most economical, you know, practices. The last several years uh, where guys are combating uh, glyphosate resistant pigweeds. And so we're screening uh, as many Liberty Link varieties as possible at several different locations, looking at their agronomic characteristics, um, treating them as a farmer would. Uh, so we're comparing them to some of the more popular Roundup Ready varieties. And what we're seeing right now, you know, all the Liberty Link varieties are, are performing as well, if not some a little bit better than, you know, some of the current Roundup Ready varieties. One of the bigger studies we're looking at right now in conjunction with uh, Bob Scott is looking at uh, three different row spacings, uh, a fairly narrow row spacing at 15 inches and then two that are a little bit wider, uh, 30 and 36 inch row spacing. Narrow row spacings are, are where you know, farmers can gain a lot of their yield. So anything less than 30 inches uh, and below, I think you know, a farmer's gonna see a, a dramatic increase in their, in their yield potential compared to something that's wide, you know, 36, 38, 40 inch row spacing. So that's been our big push the last several years, just trying to get guys to, to narrow up their row spacing. You know, looking at where we had pigweed pressure versus where we didn't, I mean, it was, you know, a 30, 35, 40% increase in yield with the elimination of pigweeds. And so when we looked at our row spacings, our narrow row spacings actually did give us benefit, uh, you know, higher yields compared to the other row spacings in the presence of weeds. And so, you know, that, again, that just kind of gives us a little bit more credit for trying to narrow up our row spacings. You know, we're just eliminating the weeds earlier because we're getting quicker canopy closure. Uh, we're saving on our uh, soil moisture once you get that canopy, you know, closed in. It's pre preserving, you know, soil moisture and, and other things like that. On top of that, we're looking at three different seeding rates, uh, a suboptimum seeding rate of about 110,000, uh, optimum seeding rate of 150,000, and then a above optimum seeding rate of 190,000. For years, you know, around 185,000 seed per acre is going to top out yield. Anything over and above that, you're actually going to probably lose yield, competition for nutrients, for water, all kinds of other things. So, um, you know, if you if you look at any of these population curves, you know, you get a dramatic increase from very low populations as you as you go up. You know, you kind of get to the top of the peak, and then at one point it actually starts to to decrease again. And, uh, and that's where we really try to find that very top of that peak, you know, to give farmers the, the you know, the, the best seeding rate. Production practices, uh, the verification program is funded solely by the, the Soybean Promotion Board. Uh, it's a very good project. It's putting our recommendations kind of out there on the front line for growers to look at and verify that our recommendations are current and up to date. And, farmers can use our recommendations to produce a high yielding economical crop. Fertility is a, is a big thing that I'm, I'm kind of part on. So, you know, we, we rely on the checkoff funds, you know, to really run our research programs. And if we didn't have that, that funding, you know, we, we wouldn't be able to go out there and, and try to get our, you know, the recommendations that we can present to the growers and, and the, and the state to, to help them grow, a, you know, a high yield and economical crop. Probably the, the newest commodity to come into the state is uh, edamame, which is an edible soybean. So we really kind of started to 
ground level trying to develop, you know, production recommendations for edamame. You know, if the consumer wants a pristine pod with no blemishes and no insect damage and no diseases and stuff like that. So probably the biggest battle is, is coming up with, you know, insecticide and fungicide recommendations to, to prevent, you know, any kind of problems on the pod. Because a, a normal soybean producer, he, he really doesn't care, you know, what the pod looks at, like, you know, at the end of the season because it's going to run through the combine and get crushed and all he's really wanting is a, a nice soybean seed. And so we kind of had to change our mentality and kind of fine tune our recommendations on some of our insects and diseases to to really be on the, the lookout early, early enough and then uh, react quick enough that we can prevent, you know, having any kind of damage to that seed. Again, I'd like to thank the board and farmers in the state for letting us have that opportunity to, to look at that, that commodity and try to come up with recommendations for farmers.